Welcome back. Time now for the news review, and you have the tag team right here in the studio, Sweetie Abochi and um... Benjamin Akapo. <laughs> I nearly got you there. I, I right? nearly forgot my name. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have joining the conversation Dr. Kwame Asa Asante. Uh, he is a political scientist, also director of the Center for European Studies. But before we get into that, we're serving you Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic as well, because guess what? They're offering you, if you're a man, today a lot more of you are at home watching us. If you're a man, you've never checked your prostate out before. Charlie, to chima So, um, you need to take uh, good care of your health. That's the maintenance we do uh, for our bodies. Then again, if you're a woman and fertility checks, uh, we want you to check yourself out. And all of these being proffered for you and offered for free. All you need to do is head to any of the branches of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, and they are all over the place. Let's start with here in Accra. They are at Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard, then in Kumasi. Kronum Abwehia behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takra Dianaji State. There's also Tema Community 22, Techiman Hanswa, and Esiama and Zema. If you'd like to call them, these are the numbers 0244 867 or 0274-234-321. 0274-234. 321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. But just the start of the news review, let me bring in Dr. Kwame Asa Asante. Doc, good morning. Can you hear me, Dr. Asa Asante? Yes, good morning, Ben. Good morning. It's good to have you. I am here with Sweetie Abochi, and we'll be having this uh, breakfast. Uh, I don't take uh, coffee. Morning, I nearly said coffee, time. but I don't take coffee. So, do. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, we can yeah. still have... You'll have coffee. Yeah. I'll have oval tea. Okay. And then, Doc, what will you have this morning? Uh, how's that cocoa? Cocoa. Or... <laughs> cocoa. Oh, cocoa. <laughs> That's good. So, so to kick, kick start matters, today we don't have any papers. We're going to be looking at the major stories and, you know, contemplating them. MyJoyOnline.com, Graphic.com, uh, among others. But two things I want to run by you. The first is, what, for you, are we celebrating today, Independence Day. Mm. Do we have anything to celebrate? What should we be celebrating? And what maybe should this remind us of in terms of how far we could have got? Doc. Ah, uh, this is a very tall order, mm. a difficult one. Um, difficult in the sense that if you look at how far we have come, one would have thought that today we'll be celebrating something that the founders of this day uh, give to us on the day of independence. But is it what we are celebrating? They left us after they've won uh, political independence. They wanted to see how future African black government, Ghanaian government, will uh, further the cause of freedom and provide economic emancipation for the people of this country. Political emancipation for the second time, all right, after the demise of colonial rule. But is that what we are celebrating? They wanted us to celebrate what? Freedom, justice, economic emancipation, and political emancipation. Look at immediately after independence and up to the fourth republic. We have been, you know, uh, saddled with military regimes that did us no good. Uh, tied to this, uh, we are also faced with what economic challenges. We don't have leaders who have what it takes to be able to address our economic problems. So today, we put in state resources, train people, and we have no benefit. They leave the shores of this country and nothing for us. What a shame. Today, we have people who sell on the streets and that they don't have means of livelihood. Is that a dream that our forefathers had in mind? Is that what they envisage for a country that they want to call their own? Today, we sit down and as if there are no leaders in the country. 
our ecosystem is destroyed with impunity. Our political system is destroyed with corruption. What, what we see broad daylight, politicians are doling out money for votes, and we go to sleep. Today, resources that are meant for the society are used otherwise. Today, we have a country that almost everything we import, including cocoa, Petekwashi, Ghana, we are importing some cocoa beans here to show up what we have to make certain what cocoa pro products. It's very, very shameful. It's very, very shameful. Today, we have sat down for our system have gone down to the thing that programs, projects that our leaders put on table that we will come and continue. We have left them. A typical example is a Pualugu Dam. We should be the game changer that whenever there is any spillage or excess water in the north, it will contain that. It is used for irrigation of arable lands around before it comes to Akosomo, by which time the pressure had come down and then finally to come. Is that the situation? And that is why one of the reasons why when water, what, we get excess. Our people in Bota region and other places suffer. Is that what the dream, is it the dream that our forefathers had for us? Osajifu in his wisdom saw that a day will come, the hydro will not support us, and we need what? Atomic energy. What has come of the atomic, atomic energy project? Put all together, you realize that we are in a very difficult situation. Where are leaders? Corruption, nepotism, favoritism, and above all, hypocrisy, sycophancy, have been governed. That we can't speak through to power simply because of what we eat. But remember, life is not about food alone. It goes beyond it. It is a necessity, but there are other things that we need as well. And that we have lost people who have what it takes to speak through to power. And that is why we are going where we are. It's unfortunate. But I always, having said all that, I have a hope that the young generation will take a cue and then work to support the older generation who are ready to make sure that we right the wrong. And for me, that is what gladdens my heart. I hope and pray that we will sustain the effort and make sure that we tell ourselves that there is no country except what our forefathers have bequeathed to us and that it is our duty to defend it by hook or by cook. Thank you for those initial remarks. And um, uh, sweetie, I just wanted to sneak in this bit as well, uh, run it by Dr. Kwame Asasan. You know, when it comes to this LGBTQ bill, mm -hmm. it's something that I don't want to forget to talk about. It's interesting because we saw the suit dated yesterday. And, and Doc, I hope you follow me uh, very clearly on, on this bit. That suit uh, brought up by... Um, President Kufado, as his reason no, no, for... no, no, I'm talking about the suit going to the Supreme Court, okay. the individual who has put this suit. Uh, this is what President Kufuado actually uh, said. And I, I am intentionally not bringing up uh, the issue of the individual, but President Kufuado speaking to the international community mm. On the fourth day of March, 2024, the Diplomatic New Year greetings said, I am aware that, and I'm quoting him here, I am aware that last week's bipartisan passage by Parliament of the Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill um, on a private member's motion has raised considerable anxieties in certain quarters of the diplomatic community and among some friends of Ghana that she may be turning her back on her hitherto enviable long-standing record on human rights observance and attachment to the rule of law. I want to assure you that no such backsliding will be contemplated or occasioned. I think it will serve little purpose to go at this stage into the details of the origin of this proposed law which is yet to reach my desk. But suffice it to say that I have learned that today a challenge has been mounted at the Supreme Court by a concerned citizen to the constitutionality of the proposed legislation. In the circumstances, it would be as well for us, for all of us to hold our hands and await the decision of the court before any action is taken. 
the operation of the institutions of the Ghanaian state will determine the future trajectory of the rule of law and human rights compliance in our country. But what's interesting, the president, a number of things. One, says, let's wait for the Supreme Court to rule on the matter before I decide which way to go on advice. But if you go back to March 2022, President Akufuado signed the E-Levy bill into law despite a suit at the Supreme Court. That's one. Then two, people have asked, Mr. President made these comments to the, 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 the international community, the diplomatic uh, missions, the core. On the fourth, this suit that was filed by an individual at the Supreme Court was filed on the fifth, the technical documents, on the fifth. So people have asked, how did the president know about this suit? <laughs> and was he a prophet to be able to talk about the suit in anticipation of its, its happening? It's left a lot he of people scratching. Maybe he used some means that isn't accessible to the rest of the populace to know that there will be a suit like this in, in, in court. So, I mean. And you know what else is interesting? How, yeah. What else is interesting is that um, Alexander Afinio Marking, speaking in Parliament, had mentioned, had encouraged that an individual should go forward, a specific individual should go forward and challenge this at the Supreme Court. And uh, if you look at his chambers and everything, there are some, I don't want to draw lines, but there are some connections. connections. There's yeah. a nexus. So, Doc, the question that is, people have asked is this whole bit about the finance ministry saying we'll lose this much and all of that. Is it the system, the NPP, from the president himself, uh, deciding not to go along with the wishes of what all of parliament has said? What is your take on that? I think that um, I will want to hold all my hold and then wait for the Supreme Court to make a determination. Mm. Um, and then we can have a lively conversation on this issue. After all, the debate is so on. It's going to, go into, uh, die down now. But let's hold on and then let the Supreme Court speak and we'll come in. You know my position on these things when the issues are before court. The issue is before court, but at least the fact that the president prognosticated even before the fact, what does that tell you? Well, my understanding is that the president, yeah, wants to wait for the Supreme Court to speak. Yes, but he based, he based his waiting on the fact that the Supreme Court would do this. On the day he was speaking, there was no such suit there. Well, I have no knowledge about this, but I believe that once now it is public knowledge, that is before uh, the honorable court. I want to wait. All right. But in fact, well. <laughs> right. So I'm thinking that that statement that the president gave out was quite the booze. And in a way, trying to avoid directly saying that he's not ready to ascend to this bill. That's what, what the, you think? That's what I think. Mm. Because you go around and say that you want to assure us that we are not... Look, uh, you know, turning back on our cultural values and no, it's he's basically talking about more of human rights erosion because yes. you know and Virginia Palmer, the American mm -hmm. ambassador, had said a few things and all of Even that. Even the right. vice president Kamala came and talked about the bill and he had his own responses. So right. President Okufuado has been in a tight corner when it comes to this bill. But how much of it is just showmanship? How much of it is just for television? How much of it is just for press work? Cosmetic. You yeah, know man. how much of this LGBTQ shenanigans and the manner is, or you know, the mechanisms that's surrounding passing this bill into law is actually real and in the interest of the populace, in the interest of Ghanaians, mm. and how much of it is just for their own benefit so that internationally right. they can be recognized as or seen as doing something in line of human rights and all that. But, 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 but so two things yes. to consider. I think I have some, you know, uh, listen to my sister. I think I disagree. Okay. Uh, okay. Because in spite of all that the president has said, do you think if finally, at the end of the day, after the Supreme Court has spoken and the president signs this into law, would we still hold this position? So I think you, let's wait. Uh, the, the, the journey has just started. So I want to wait for the court and that, um, you know, after the court, mm. then we'll see when uh, the bill has been 
is sent to the president and all that. Then the conversation follows. All right. And, um, uh, you know, this, this is supposed to test the constitutionality of the bill. Yeah. Right? Um, Parliament still has leeway. Okay. Regardless. Yes. Because in the end, if it secures two-thirds majority in Parliament, whether the president gives his assent to it or not, it can make it law. Right. And as Kweku Asante reports from Parliament, there are a lot of people on the majority side who are upset about even when the finance ministry came up to talk about some of these things. It, has, it's, it was as though they were laying the grounds for something that, hey, this, if you go this way, and I do accept, but some would also say, if you feel this way, then don't accept quote unquote gay money. Mm. And I use this very respectfully, not to denigrate anybody. I've never been for denigrating anybody. But some have said that some of these countries and all of that who espouse this, you take their money. You accept aid, grants, loans from them. If you don't want this, then how about Ghana beyond aid? You see where that comes in. But those are the interesting you know, uh, questions. I mean, let's let's get into it. It has not really gotten to a stable yet. So let's just wait and see, like Dr. Kwame Asasanti said. Let's wait and see how we play. It's, it's his move now. So let's see how he plays it. Benjamin, you're too excited for this. Me, I can but, sit here and dance. I'm not in the hot seat. <laughs> what I, I want to get a sense of both of you, Benjamin, and Dr. Kwame Sasanti, about Ghana spending with Doc. <laughs> $195 million oh, that's one. on infrastructure for the 13th African Games. That is according to the sports minister. The story says, uh, Mustafa Youssef, the youth and sports minister, has confirmed that a total of $195 million. Let me mention that figure again. $195 million spent on infrastructure development in preparation for the 2023 African Games, which is scheduled to take place on Thursday. You know, have you seen the University of Ghana Stadium? And do you think that it can be valued at this figure, $195 million? Dr. Kwame Asante. Oh, I am not an expert in this area, but I have no doubt in my mind that uh, the, those who are technical officers will do the right thing. Um, so, for me, I have very little uh, to say in that direction. I think I'm not a technical officer. And I hope that what I see, the edifice and all the things that have gone there, yes, yeah, I'm sure they budgeted for all these things and that will move on. Uh, there's nothing wrong with people uh, wanting to know the value and all that and all that. It's part of the accountability system which is part and parcel of our constitution in the word the preamble and all that. So uh, people ask whatever questions people want to ask. I'm sure there are answers for them. All right. I, 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 I am just checking um, interestingly and, and I'm going to have to uh, use Google on this. I just checked the cost of um, the Emirates Stadium, okay. right? Emirates, yeah. Arsenal. Mm. I came up with 390 million pounds. Uh, let me check the cost of the camp now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Barcelona's. I, I just want to check a few things uh, in here. Uh, it was dated at around, uh, so the, the cost, $414 million as of April 2023. $414 million, 360 million euros. Let's do the last one, Old Trafford. It's not seen... Uh, of course, there have been renovations as well, but I'm just giving ballpark uh, figures. Um, but while okay, you so that, that might, that might be a bit mm, complicated. The detailed breakdown, according to yeah, Mr. Yeah, yeah, please give he us says that, that $145 million mm -hmm. was invested in the construction of a state-of-the-art sports center mm -hmm. at the Boteman, Boteman, Sport, yeah, Boteman. Sports Complex. And then there's $34 million that was directed towards renovating. $34 million, renovating the University of Ghana Stadium, and then 16 million was earmarked for the refurbishment of the games village. So that's the breakdown of where the 195 million dollars went into when I it comes see. to infrastructure for the African games. I've seen I've seen part of the breakup right before we bring uh, the breakdown right before we bring mm -hmm. in uh, Dr. Asasante one more time. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing I am asking, like we've seen from Gold Coast Australia and that incident to everything in between. If you look at these figures, so uh, University of Ghana Stadium, $34 million. Mm -hmm. You have Botiman Sports Complex, $145 million. Mm -hmm. The Games Village, $16 million. Uh, and we are not talking about cities. We are talking dollars. dollars, right? 
How much are we getting? Android how much are we getting in each tranche of the IMF? Six hundred million. Now you put all of this together, you are looking at what one one so almost one ninety million Ghana cities, almost two hundred million. That's about a third of what we keep going every every yeah. six months or so. We're expected to get mm -hmm. from the IMF. Mm -hmm. My question: When we come out with this expenditure, oh, but at the sports complex, Botiman. $145 million. University of Ghana Stadium, $34 million. Me, I would have questions about the University of Ghana Stadium. I use that place. I look at it. I look at that place. You may say, oh, I'm not a technical person, but I have eyes, okay? Now, what would serve me is to give me a breakdown. We, we did this, that. I don't need to come to the ministry for this breakdown to be given. In other jurisdictions like Japan and other places where people want to do what is right and not hide behind stuff. These are given. Now we hear that the, the head of the National Sports Authority, Prof. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to go into that issue, but um, he's finally out of uh, that position. Finally, yeah. Charlie, the <laughs> things that have happened, and the, let me leave it there. Right. It, I, I think as sports, I, I said it yesterday, it's one of the avenues where, I'm sorry, theft, grand theft, Looting. happens. Yeah. And I want to see a breakdown for this. It shouldn't be another instance like with our Black Stars, we spent this on that. Where, how, how did you expend the money? Well, he, Who got what? When? How? He says he, we're anticipating about 2 billion you know, people or audience. And the 2 billion people's eyes will be on Ghana. So it needs to be some sort of now, Africa, state Africa of population, the art you're saying. If, if you're saying now, your population, you're saying. $5 million, Benjamin. Hey! Dr. Asante, I don't know whether you have any further comments. If not, we, we shall move on. Oh, I, my comments, I still maintain them because uh, these things are technical issues. But it's fair that people want to demand accountability and all that. Yes, uh, these are legitimate uh, questions. But you need that. Somebody like me, I need a technical eye to be able to understand, apart from the fact that they can also supply us the information for us to know. So it's fair when people demand it. But... You, you need to be a technical person to speak from the point of view of authority. Okay. Other stories you'd like us to get into? Oh, let's get into your stories, Benjamin. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me get on myjoyonline.com. Uh, Lots of stories there, definitely, that would have to do uh, right before that. Okay, so yeah. Anti-LGBTQ plus bill president is being constitutionally reckless. He's playing tricks on us. Uh, that's according to an MP. So... According to that story, a co-sponsor of the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill, Roxanne Nelson Dafia Makpo, uh, believes President Akufuado is toying with constitutional requirements as far as the power vested in him to assent to the bill is concerned. The member of parliament representing the South Nye constituency in the Volta region is not the least enthused about the president's stance on the bill after its passage by parliament. Um, and, of course, it goes back to what I, I read earlier, what President Akufuado said mm. to the international... Uh, community. Uh, and, and according to Dafia McBoy, he says, where you have a strong disposition to not assenting to a bill, it is not your business and the law to keep it. Perhaps your reservation about the bill is in respect of some provisions or the entire bill. Just, to, just say so to Parliament. That's what, that's what um, he uh, says. And then you would, you would also say, assent to anti-LGBTQI plus bill. Africa is watching you. Kofi Amwa uh, to so lots of stories on that bit uh, also before the Supreme Court. Any other stories you'd like to do? Or should well, I... we can talk briefly about sustaining the uh, Ghana school feeding program. Mm. You know, we've had still yet to air documentary on the free SHS, especially when it comes to feeding. But because we're having a lot of reactions to it, the conversation of why the need to respond to something when you haven't actually, you've not seen the full content that's, you know, and what it speaks to. So there have been some views of whether they should take out boarding from this free SHS system to allow the money to be allocated to proper feeding of our students. Dr. Kwame Asasanti, I don't know what you think about it when it comes to feeding and the nature of the, the, the quality of the food that they're serving our students or, you know, children in school under the free SHS policy. We are not saying the policy in itself is bad. Maybe it's just the challenges that come with implementation and perhaps budget allocation and where the money goes. You and, know, and I don't know whether Doc has seen the, the videos, the promo, some of what yeah. we put out, the promos. Mm. And 
and some complaints from different schools. I, I have seen the food and I've asked myself, would you give this food? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to, to say pet. this. Even to your pet. Would you give this food to your pet? Doc, uh, you are in academia. Yes. I don't yes. know what you I think. think. Um, I commend your FM for that good, um, you know, um, you know, program that you are airing now, the documentary. Uh, it is nothing but um, something uh, food for thought, so to speak, for us to know that all is not well. I am so happy in the sense that just last year, um, following conversation, in fact, I, I did not know that while there were a lot of problems within the system until a colleague of mine gave me an idea that, hey, we buy food, we do this. And I said, really? Is that the case? So I did a few checks and they said, that's the situation. I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> is that what is happening? So I was happy when your team went there uh, to the schools and then you started what airing out the problems and all that. Uh, free SHS is a good concept. There's no doubt about that. Mm. But my worry is that uh, I can see an effort to prevent people from, you know, airing out their view about the system. I don't know where it's coming from. Because uh, you, if you are outside the school system, you will think that all is well. Until now that, look at your documentary and I listen to a story your network carried about Africa Education Watch, your report about the system that even the funding of the school, parents pay more than even the government, what government does. In fact, Doc, Doc, parents, yes. some parents share that their children are, come home malnourished, looking real thin, and that yes. some of these parents tell you that, look, what is it? Then just let us pay and, and give them proper food because in mm -hmm. the end, every week we are sending them about 100 CDs. Multiply that by the number of weeks they are in school. Yes. That, that's yes. what some parents are saying. Or make it optional. If you parents can pay, are paying pay so it. much. They are spending so much on food, on what? Uh, other things that keep their walls in the school and all that. And yet we are saying that the system is what? Free. Uh, what type of contradiction is that? Why are we not honest ourselves that, look, this is what the government can pay? You know, we will accept because we, the other option is that government will not pay for anybody and that we have to put the bill ourselves. So if government is paying something, all right, government should be what? Open enough that, look, those who have the means to pay, please continue and all that. I don't understand. You see, these are all, what, policy issues. If you put a policy into place, after everything, you evaluate the policy from time to time and make sure that the policy lives up to expectation. Remember that public policies are driven by what state resources. And so if you want to ensure value for money, you all the time what, do what, an evaluation to come to a certain conclusion, either to terminate the policy or to what, strengthen it, or... Uh, to, you know, allow it to roll. And uh, this is what, so sometimes I ask myself whether we do understand public policy, whether we are alive to the rudiments of public policy. <clears throat> because you see a lot of things they go wrong in the area of what? Policy. A policy of building what? Houses for workers. Now you have buildings in the bush and that meanwhile we have spent state resources. You put children in school fine policy, you don't have the means. And then people suggest, look, we are ready to work, support you. And government, uh, all these things are falling on deaf ears of government. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Then you send, uh, send children to school, and then they are what, malnourished. Parents are complaining. They send food at them to school every now and then, and all that. Why? Why do we want to what, worry ourselves when uh, what, the truth is there? when we need to do just a single thing and then come back to tie it to school feeding all right i i always disagree that we should spend so much on school feeding what has happened to what school guarding system school guarding system where when i was a student at the cropong ptc demonstration junior secondary school we're making farms and we're getting idf secondary school the tech and go we saw a lot of farms can't you go into what? A production of what? 
uh, maize, uh, all the food we need, including what? Uh, poultry, yeah. including fish farm, and all that. That the school can what, generate ideas from all this and then support the school and tell government, look, don't bring anyone. We are able to take care of ourselves. And then you also what, generate ideas to run the school and then sell some of these things that the students will not consume to the outside. It is very doable. It is doable that you can begin with what school garden system where you plant what crops there, depending on the fertility and how suitable those things are, are fit to grow in that area. You can plant there. You can what start what fish ponds and begin to provide what uh, fish there and poultry, supply eggs and then what uh, chicken to the school. And of course, the school cannot consume all this. You sell some to what public and you generate resources. So if we are able to pilot it and start gradually, I tell you, in no time, the government will have a hands free from the secondary schools that is struggling to what feed. They will feed themselves and feed other mm -hmm. schools who are vulnerable and the rest of them. Do, do you know what yeah. comes to I mind? Down and I hear that, look, paying of electricity bills in these schools are a problem. But I ask myself, why should it be a problem? Where we can what? You know, start with what? Uh, solar panels and then take the schools off the national grid and then what? Uh, you know, uh, see how PTA and or government will be able to fund it. This will save us all problems. Um, sometimes I ask myself, do we have people who are fit for public office to manage these things? The question I've not been able to answer. And, and you know, this just came to mind. Mm. I've never actually contemplated this, but this analogy just came to mind, both Doc and Sweetie. Mm. Free SHS is like Joseph's coat of many colors. Wonderful outfit. Looks very good, right? It is good. And it looks good. But... And call, it doesn't fit you. It's you are bigger than that blazer or jacket. And so we'll say chin chin ya obeshe. So what will happen? Doc, I don't know, but that's what I think. Wonderful uh, thing, like a jacket, blazer, top class, mm -hmm. excellent quality. But and call, we'll say chin chin ya obeshe. Then you see. I think that's. I, you destroy the analogy that comes to mind. And at the end of the day, you, you find you a way to increase in the cloth. You will never look good in the club. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. what is exactly we are, we are seeing. This is a beautiful program. But look, allow suggestions to be made yeah. and incorporate into the system and yeah. make it work better for us. Policies that are not reviewed are not, no policies. Mm. You put in a policy, part of the policy process is evaluation. And once you evaluate and evaluate properly, you'll be able to know whether the policy is worth maintaining or worth improving or what jettison. Right. You have something, uh, a last thing to do. I was going yeah, to talk about the social media's reactions to... But I wanted uh, to talk briefly about the Minister-Designate for Sanitation and her... Sarah Malhassan. Her, her, leader Sarah Malhassan. Her reaction to the question of the Ayahuasca West were gone violence during right. the election. And she broke down in, in tears and said she was in pain during that time. And so really she didn't understand what was happening. And I'm saying that you're... You're being because vetted. of the bereavement. Yes, right. you're being vetted for a position in, you know, as a minister. You should be able to speak to this issue, I think, without... The, well, well, the, well the, you, the, you can't take away her bereavement. You can't take away her bereavement from her. Yeah. She was in pain at the time. She had lost her husband. She was still... But I the agree with you to a certain not, extent yeah, okay. that barring your own bereavement, you wanted at that time to replace to that the, same yes. person to be in parliament and you're saying that these things happen to people i hear one of those who was shot and i think he's died or yeah. something and you you didn't follow till now you don't have any and you for, have been we had a committee on that and that's constituency so we had a committee mm -hmm. sit mm -hmm. on on that with uh justice mensa bonsu among others on name right. i i don't know i don't so know so that should that should i think that she should have given us more than the emotions because you went on to be the, the MP of the constituency. You should be able to say more than just break down in tears. Sometimes, I've, this particular story was interesting to me because you hear a lot of people saying that women this and women that. It's only a woman who would do something like that. But we are more than capable. It's just sometimes our choice of responses and reactions to some of the issues. 
Ah, right. So we have to wrap this up. Any Were you affected yesterday? Affected by the social media blackout, Facebook, Instagram. Oh no! I was locked I, out I of my account. I was at the 13th African Games Aquaba concert, so I was off my phone. It was really fun. So it, you didn't, you wouldn't there. know. No, I didn't. I've not checked Facebook and Instagram. Because I was Twitter, locked out. Twitter and WhatsApp have been active. Those are very familiar. I, I go there often. So, okay. yeah. I was locked out. I was still to sign in. Then I, I felt there was a problem. Then I went on social media and saw that it was a general problem. Ah, okay. Doc, any final words for us before you go? Oh, uh, nothing at the moment. But I believe that, look, we can make this country better. Right. If we all put our shoulders to the wheel. Mm. and do the right thing at all times. We are human. Uh, there are mistakes that are bound to happen. But when we commit them, we should be bold enough to say we are sorry mm. and then make sure that we fix it permanently. I have seen something that is going on. Right. And I think we must address it. People removing slaps on gutters, metals, and then rules. I just checked something at a, uh, you know, atomic uh, overpass. And the metals uh, used in building uh, the structure, people have removed them. Mm. These people are evil men within our society, evil women who are what undertake this exercise. We are encouraging everybody. When we see them, let's report them. Yeah. We can't destroy this state when we have spent so much resources and then we come back to blame government for some right. of these things. Right. We Not must be vigilant. We're grateful, and uh, it goes back to, if you see something, say something. Yeah. Dr. Kwame Asante is a political scientist and director of the Center for European Studies. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely.